This is the smart hashtag one, and try not to be put off by the hashtag dumb name, because what we have here is a very good car. A car which marries everything European car brands are best at, like design, fit, and finish, with everything Chinese car brands are best at, like the difficult bits. The Fully Charged Show is generating positive energy with its live events all around the world. Next up, it's Fully Charged Live Canada. Get your tickets today. It's a new dawn at Smart Car, my friends, and that new dawn starts with this car right here. Fun fact about Smart, they were the first legacy car brand to go full electric back in 2019 when they electrified both the 4.2 and 4.4. The problem was, well, no one bought any of those, mostly because they only had enough range to get you sort of there. But this is the new and improved Smart Car. This brand is now a 50-50 Mercedes Geely product, and that should be a pretty formidable combination. So what have we got here? Well, first of all, it's the biggest smart car that ever there was. We'll get onto whether that makes it a true smart car or not a little bit later on, but you can think of this really as a sister car to the new Volvo EX30, which we were very impressed by, and we had a first look at it quite recently. It's roughly the same size, it's that 4.2 meter length that by today's standards qualifies as a relatively small car. It's roughly the same price, that mid 30,000 pound point that by today's standards qualifies as a relatively affordable car. And it sits on the same SEA platform, that's Geely architecture. Geely have done all the EV bits and bobs, Mercedes have done all the designs and the things that you touch. That is the agreement as we understand it. Now, that all sounds pretty good for starters. Chinese hardware, Mercedes touchy bits, all while costing some 16 grand cheaper than the entry-level Mercedes EQA. But I think my question with this car is, what's the thing? What's the thing that's gonna make it stand out amid many, many, many very impressive 30-something thousand pound electric family cars? What's the thing that's gonna make you wanna buy this one if it's no longer a smart car in the traditional way? Tell you what, lovely, cheerful piece of design this thing is. This car is allegedly entirely designed by Mercedes design team, which is somewhat surprising to hear, given that most Mercedes EQ cars look like Mars bars that have been melted in microwaves. This, <laughs> this is <so> <laughs> It's good that I find it funny, isn't it? This, on the other hand, really, really striking, unique looking car. I like this back bit here, look, with the kind of floating roof that reminds me a bit of those hats that come with ear flaps to keep your ears warm. Really, really interesting design on the wheels. Quite hard to make aero wheels look good, but they've achieved it here. And we've got the distinctive EQ light signature, that light bar across the front and rear. I said it when I did the first look video of this car, and I'll repeat it now. Better looking than all the EQ Mercs put together, in my opinion. A couple of things I would like to pick up on while we're doing the exterior of this car though. Andy, just come back here for a second. Boot, smaller than you might think for a 4.2 meter high riding crossover SUV. That's not a lot of boot back there. This is rear wheel drive, so there's lots of gubbins going on underneath. A little bit disappointing, I suppose. You can fold the seats flat and then you've got a nice little, nice little bit of space, but that's less than I was expecting. But it's not, it's not as bad as the front. This is, without question, the single smallest frunk I've ever seen. It's, it's just a little cupboard, look. Couldn't even get your charge cables in there. What's this for, a loaf of bread? Now, interior of the smart, ha I can't do it, the smart one. Interior, this, was the thing that stood out to me most when I had a first look at this car. I think it's the most impressive part of it, and I think it's the thing that gives you the best idea of what they're going for, because this to me, this is a little Mercedes in terms of the design and just the quality of everything you touch. It's a baby Merc. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the weight of that button to open the ample glove box. I'm talking about the fact that that's slightly magnetized, the sliding thing, and just the click it makes and you get to either end, the weight on that, the thunk of the indicator and the, the lovely little binging bonging that it makes. It feels so quality in here. I don't know 
of another electric car at this price point that feels so luxury. Really enjoy the design in here, like the use of this bespoke EV architecture. I always like when they do this, where they give you the big storage bin, but then instead of just giving you absolutely nothing, they give you more handy storage. We've got our wireless charger and our two USB-C ports and our cup holders. And again, a big refrigerated glove box. And look, in the smart car, they gave us Smarties. Smarties, smart car. I was gonna do a whole bit where I was like snacking on these while reviewing the interior, but I have already eaten them. And I do like the fact that nothing's fingerprinted. There's none of that kind of piano black material that just looks horrible the second that you touch it and then never looks clean for the rest of time. And then we get to the software, which is hugely impressive, quite interesting to look at. We've got a little animated fox character here that pops up every now and then if I flick through my settings for the car. There he is. If I fiddle with my uh, climate control, there he is, sitting in my seat. Don't know what he's doing there. That's quite strange. Very hashtag one very gen z let's ignore all of that because the important thing is it works really well and it's really quick it's really quick and responsive this car's got one of the most powerful processors of any in-car infotainment system i don't know what that means but i'm told it's very fast and has many cores and it works it just works look if i press this charging button immediately it loads up all the charging stations near me nice and quick it's just really fast and responsive easy to navigate bright colorful cheerful menus and just a million cameras on this car as well as standard it's worth noting that as it stands, there is no bare bones entry level version of this car. Currently the entry level car, the 36 grand one, comes with the giant pano sunroof, adaptive cruise control and heated seats and a million toys and gizmos. And that really speaks to where they're pitching this car. Again, this is no utilitarian city commuter vehicle anymore. This is a small luxury car. So let's rattle off a few stats about the smart hashtag one before getting into how it feels to drive. First of all, 62 kilowatt hour usable battery pack. That's ever so slightly smaller than the one in the long range version of its sister car, the Volvo EX30. That's good for a quoted range in the vicinity of 270 miles, which probably means a real world range in the vicinity of 230s, depending on weather and how heavy your right foot is and a million other things, of course. Here's a fun one. 1.6 tons that's the towing capacity of this vehicle which is equivalent to a kia ev6 this thing pulls perhaps the most surprising number about this car is 268 that's how much brake horsepower this one's got this is just the rear wheel drive version which will do 0 to 60 in a alleged sub seven seconds but actually reports from early tests have been that it's a, a good second quicker than that i don't know why they've given it that much power in the entry level version of this car the mad thing is there's a brabus version with an extra motor at the front that has got 422 brake horsepower and does 0 to 60 in less than four seconds i would avoid that car personally because smart have been very upfront about the fact that they've changed nothing dynamically it's got the same suspension it's the same brakes it's just a lot faster in a straight line and considering that this is quite a rolly squashy high riding crossover i have no interest in knowing how this would feel with an extra 100 plus horsepower that sounds like an accident waiting to happen excessive horsepower aside lovely car to drive look at this scene in front of me nothing is more english than this i'm in traffic in the rain on a country b road and it's perfectly pleasant the steering is nice and light in the setting i've got it in which suits this kind of driving the visibility is excellent and the car feels pretty small on the road compared to a lot of stuff that's coming out right now and that combined with the great visibility just makes it really really easy to move along the road love this steering wheel it's kind of very toy car vibes and definitely reminiscent of the old smart 4.2 the driving position is excellent and very adjustable i've got it with the seat really low down and the steering wheel all the way out to account for my height and freakishly long legs and i've been able to do that very successfully i feel very comfortable smart claims that this hashtag one has as much room in the back as a mercedes e-class i'll tell you what that is a good amounts of room tons of headroom 
Lovely with this panoramic sunroof. Good amount of legroom. You can see the seat is all the way back in my driving position. I would argue that this configuration with really roomy back seats and a slightly small boot is a better use of space than having a huge cavernous boot and slightly cramped rear seats because you can always fold them flat if you need to. You can even slide them forwards and backwards. Good amount of space back here. And again, everything just feels premium from the window switches to the door handles to the air vents, the fit and finish is Mercedes grade. And we talk a lot about how the legacy car brands are in some ways disadvantaged by their 100 year history. After all, the bigger the ship, the harder it is to steer when it comes to transitioning to electric vehicles. But there are also certain advantages of having had 100 years of practice making cars. And the quality and the fit and finish in here is a perfect example of that. You do get the impression that Merck have been doing this for a while. I'll tell you something very specific that I'm really enjoying about this car. Very polite lane keep assist system. Lane keep assist, as I'm sure many of you know, is the scourge of modern cars. It's the technology designed to uh, ensure you don't veer into the opposite lane and have a head-on collision but in so many cars, it's just way too aggressive. You find the wheel being literally yanked out of your hands anytime you go anywhere near the central partition, which when driving on English roads, you do just have to do quite a lot. It's the thing that Bobby hates by far the most about his MG4. There, I did it. Yes. Which is a really good example of that system being done really badly. But in this car, very polite, very gentle. I've got two lines on the heads up display marking the two edges of the road. And if I get too near in the middle, the one on the right hand side just glows yellow. The wheel just very gently vibrates. It's the car's way of going, I'm so sorry to bother you. You're about to have a massive crash. Sorry, 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 sorry to disturb. Much better, no wheel yanking. A feature that is slightly more annoying, however, is the attention detection. There's an eyeball sensor there that's making sure that I'm looking at the road, as I should be. But if I glance at the camera to talk to you, or even just fiddle with something on the infotainment in a way that you totally would when driving in a perfectly normal and safe way, the car beeps at you quite loudly. Obviously it's not done it just then when I wanted it to, but it does, I promise. Look, so I, I'm looking. That's the noise, that noise there. And just while I'm whinging about a few things, uh, this software, while it is extremely responsive and works really well. What are these graphics? What is this little big planet six? It, it's a bit naff. I don't need the cartoon Fox or the little cartoon world. Uh, and I'm the young person that this is trying to appeal to. It's, it's not working for me. I think it's just a slightly embarrassing attempt to pander to a young buyer along with that hashtag in the name. Of course, the interesting thing about young people is they're not especially interested in owning cars and they don't have 36 grand lying around for crossover -y SUVs. But I think my biggest qualm with this car is, is it still a smart car? This is a brand that I associate with being disruptive, rule breaking, thinking differently and above all else, giving you the absolute most from not very much. And if we take it as read that this car had to be bigger than the old 4.2s purely for business reasons, I think the thing that Smart could and should have done to have made this a proper disruptor, a proper Smart car, is go big on efficiency. Don't make it an SUV. Don't give it unnecessary amounts of horsepower. Apply the learnings of the Mercedes EQXX concept. Make it low slung, ultra aerodynamic, modest power, super efficient, industry leading efficiency, enabling them to give it a smaller battery and therefore a lower price. That would have been a proper disruptor, a proper smart car. What I'm much more interested in seeing from the smart brand personally is smaller and cheaper. I wanna see the 25,000 pound smart car that instead of giving you more than enough, gives you just what you need and makes that charming and interesting. So there we have it, the Smart Hashtag One. A very, very, very good electric car. Just not an especially smart one. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have been, thanks for watching. Support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy.